Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Thank you guys very much for joining us today. My name is Scott Sugden, Product and Technology Outreach Manager at L Acoustics. And joined with me today, Dan Bowers. Thank you and welcome. Oh, thank you, Scott. I'm glad to be here for this webinar. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, yeah, today is going to be kind of a little bit of a fun one. Uh, we're going to kind of look at these small to medium sized festivals uh, and kind of how do we uh, have some design objectives? How do we approach uh, how we kind of put these together and some of our, uh, not say limitations, but sometimes we have restrictions, uh, things we got to really kind of work with it. Um, I, you know, I think the biggest thing you're know, kind of looking at here uh, today, Scott, is going to be like these community festivals um, where it's maybe more uh, a city park or a local festival that's going on, um, you know, where it's for these smaller scale. It could be like a DJ, it could be a blues band, uh, you know, that kind of feel. People are going to hang out. Um, we we'll also kind of take a look at like that street festival idea um, where we'll be going, you know, maybe the vendors and food and, you know, alcohol sales are maybe kind of the premise of this maybe uh, outing and there's music in the background to enjoy our music being provided uh, for like a street festival cool. and maybe a downtown area. Cool. And Dan, uh, you, we'll you've got of, Dan, yep. you've got some some kind of expertise in this world as well. You grew up uh, obviously uh, uh, in the United States. You have that thick uh, Midwestern accent. Um, is that right? I do not know what you speak of whatsoever about that, Mr. Sugden. Uh, yeah, you know, again, what's kind of neat when we kind of talk about the Midwest, uh, if you kind of see this community festival picture here, um, that's actually my town. Um, they do these wonderful summer sound things, which is kind of fun. Uh, on Friday nights, people come out and hang out. Uh, so again, that would get a little bit of that, you know, community Midwest love here. Um, so so this is, know, it, these kind of... Uh, I was going to say, Scott, you know, you know, and people may not know, Scott is from this area as well originally. So he knows about this Midwest uh, hangout kind of idea. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Scott, right? Yeah, so I, Dan and I actually uh, are both from a similar part of the United States. Um, and and I think this, this resonates with a lot of people, these small, um, we call it a small festival stage, and it still might be what, a thousand people or 1500 people or 2000 people, maybe, maybe even a few more. Um, but it's very much a, a common bit of work that a lot of rental providers, a lot of sound engineers and technicians do around the world. And 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 I like that you point out the community festival aspect because I think all of us can imagine post COVID that that might be one of the first things that comes back is, is hey, we want to get together in a in a socially respectful way. We can do that at a community level. We might not be able to do a show in front of a stadium, but we might be able to do a show in, in the neighborhood or in the city. So this makes a lot of sense to us here. Um, you talk a little bit about the street festival. Can you describe that? Maybe like what the what the general, uh, you know, the, the the street festival you've done in the past. Maybe have you done any of these in in uh, Wisconsin or Missouri or, or or things like that? Yeah, the street festivals, um, I, you know, I think are kind of a fun, unique thing. They're usually over a weekend uh, where we're maybe not a headlining performance uh, in the evening, but it's. You know, people are enjoying the weather. They're, they've closed the main street of the town. They've put arts and craft vendors, uh, food, uh, and people are just kind of hanging out, walking around. And then maybe it's like a local band. Um, and one of the unique challenges uh, I always experience with these street festivals, uh, this is where the stage rolls in in the morning. Uh, we got to deploy quickly um, by maybe say 8 a.m. in the morning. We're sound checking, pinning the deck by 10 a.m. and first band is on the downbeat at 12 o'clock noon. And then we run for the next eight to 10 hours. Um, so it's just kind of one of those fun, you know, just kind of hang out. Uh, you can see like in this picture, uh, I think this is actually Chicago, Illinois. So any of the people familiar with that area, um, this is one of the suburbs kind of close to downtown, but not central downtown. It's a neighborhood sure. Sure. Uh, where they close it down. It's really cool. And then obviously like, you know, we can think of these small stages as community festivals or maybe street festivals, city fairs. And then also if I, I look at any big festival I've been to in my life, there's there's one or two or three really big stages. And then there's usually two mm -hmm. or three times that number, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 small stages that might be anywhere from what a, a small tent to maybe a, a small mobile stage of some kind. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, this could be, you know, these uh, size stages or smaller festivals. I think this way you might see maybe a, a regional band, uh, maybe a C, maybe a B, National Act. Um, and it might be some up-and-coming bands, um, again, where they're on the rise. Uh, and depending on the size of the festival, like you said, this could be, 
you know, a few hundred people up to a few thousand people at these stages. Sure. Um, I had a very unique experience, which I think uh, this is you know my days of going to shows before I got into the industry uh, at a radio festival, big PA on the main stage. And then there was a side stage with more up and coming bands. Well, it was one of those unique scenarios where that band that summer was hitting that was playing on mm -hmm. the side stage. Sure. There was more people at the side stage than the main stage. It's sure. like, this it, is cool. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, so yeah, everyone, uh, obviously, thank you guys if you're watching us live in Teams right now. It looks like there's quite a good sized audience today. Um, if you guys have any questions as we get into this conversation, this uh, this explanation about that, please don't hesitate to put them in the Q&A. Uh, secondly, I've actually posted a link in the Q&A notes. It's also, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, directly below in the description. That link is to a file. That's the files that we're going to be using today. So if you want to follow along at home, please don't hesitate to do that. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, guys, please don't uh, forget to hit that subscribe button below. Uh, make sure you get updated on all of our latest uh, video releases at L Acoustics. So, Dan, um, community festival, right? Uh, generally, what, open air? Um, I see that. Oh, you put it on screen. Thank you. Um, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm right with you there, Scott. Um, what, what kind of products do we see? Like, let's let's talk L Acoustics, obviously. Um, this 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 isn't, uh, you know, uh, intrinsic to L Acoustics itself, but uh, there's, you know, generally a, a class or a category of products that we see often in these 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 shows can you can you talk about that a bit yeah so i think sometimes again we talk scale sometimes so if we start the smaller end this could be a maybe a ground supported stage to start with uh, so we can start to imagine maybe the concept of maybe a couple of ks21s with some af a15s on top uh two per side uh kind of idea uh, but it can also scale up to again depending um what the needs are and also the distance and lf uh, requirements of the show uh, we may have to scale up and it could be a, a flown array of a series. Um, we also have that ability, which is great with Kara 2 now. Uh, Kara, great product and has Panflex uh, ability now. So the Kara 2 uh, can be very beneficial with, you know, the ability to, you know, we can have some control of that HF uh, where we're trying to send some information uh, and even going larger. Um, we could be, you know, this, you know, stage has got, you know, bigger bands maybe playing it. Maybe we have to be a K2 now. Um, and sure. again, the weight, you know, becomes a conversation, deployment options. All these are quite key uh, when we start looking at these. Um, and I really like kind of this, you know, community festival idea we're kind of starting with, uh, again, where we can look at maybe the A series, K2, K2. Uh, sure. It's really beneficial, um, especially when we start kind of looking at, you know, what that audience really kind of is. Um, like I said, this is where we're going to have more of those you know, people sitting around the outsides, maybe. Um, sure. So width uh, of the coverage is key. Um, so you, you want you're you're looking for a, you're looking for a, a design and a product that has a lot of coverage potential in this situation because maybe this is just in an open field. It's it's a, a space where um, we need to try to get as much coverage as possible. So what you've drawn here is uh, 60 by 40 meter. That's it's a pretty large space. Um, and and you envision right around the outsides, we're gonna have vendors selling arts and crafts, people selling beer, people selling uh, food. Um, you know, everyone can get their uh, their hot dog and pizza, I guess, um, if yeah. we're in um, Or I, I like the idea, like that, that wonderful uh, event that happens here. Again, we're talking about, we need a lot of coverage, but we're wider than we are deep. Um, Cause this might be where people come in with their blankets and chairs. Um, we sure. can't even see in this design, it's more, but it's a lower audience. Um, but like, you know, we have, you know, that feeling, that community feeling where you know, people are going to roll in with a wagon that maybe has some cheese and wine in it. Um, Got it. And Got they're it. just going to set up. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. I, and I totally get that. Like, um, and, and in this case, you're using uh, mobile stage. Is this, uh, you said it's a stage line SL260. For those who are maybe SL260, not, correct. not familiar with that, that's one of these um, stages that rolls in on a truck or is a truck itself, a trailer, I guess, and mm -hmm. sets up in a couple hours with a couple of guys. Is that about right? Yeah, and this also be, and we're kind of used for this example too. We kind of can get up to an SL260 with kind of the design we're talking about, about with this. Uh, and this could also maybe be, it's a permanent stage um, that the community built, or it's a seasonal stage that Got rolls it. in. Got it. Uh, yeah, it's that kind of feel for it. Cool. Uh, the other thing I think that's unique here too is, you know, kind of setting the atmosphere of this, you know, performance. You know, it's in the evening time. The sun's going down. Um, it's comfortable. People are really enjoying, uh, they're having a nice night. Uh, Got it. And getting to hang with some friends. Got it. And are there any challenges cool. of deployment in this scenario on that that stage line that are more or less specific? Are there any challenges of this venue that are more or less specific 
um, you know, uh, that, that relate to what product we might choose or, or what we might do? Um, so one of the things I think that's unique is we talk about the idea of the width because, you know, if it's vendors or it's maybe a streets, people are going to sit everywhere. Um, so getting that coverage out to the sides. And again, we talked, you know, hit quickly on pan flex here. Uh, so the nice thing is we can maybe go to 70 degrees uh, on the top of our system, whether that's A15, Kara2 or K2, and get a little bit more SBL, HF push towards the back of our coverage, um, which is great because we're not using any resources. It's a mechanical push, uh, which is great. Um, so that's what's nice about that flexibility. We can have that within our line, have 70 degrees at the top, and then maybe 110 for the rest of the uh, array cool. for the, uh, which is very cool. Um, so then kind of, you know, setting it up for what we'll look at for a community festival. Um, uh, the next kind of conversation we'll look at too is maybe that street festival. Uh, we kind of touched on that again, where, you know, it's going to roll in morning of, uh, like you kind of mentioned, Scott, we kind of look at maybe crew. Um, this might be a couple people at best, um, a, a two person crew. Um, and this kind of becomes a unique situation too, where this might be uh, maybe the front of house tech is really a really good engineer. Um, and they're not necessarily as familiar, or not as primarily a system tech, let's put it that sure. way. Yeah. Uh, so ease of deployment, two person crew, uh, it's gotta be a quick deployment. Um, sure. And here again, there might be some limitations of what our coverage area looks like. Um, you know, we might have restrictions of a reflective surface now of a brick building, uh, yep. you know, as we try to cover in this area. Understood. Yeah, and this makes sense to me. So you're, you're talking about the challenges of of setting up that day because I always think of this a lot like this kind of a city street festival reminds me of mid-sized corporate where you have to be an engineer, you have to be a system tech, you have to be a wireless technician, you have to know how to patch the deck. Oh, by the way, you have to work for nine hours without eating or going to the bathroom as well. Um, so if we can eliminate some of the challenges, if we can buy a wireless kit that automatically scans and programs, that makes that job easier. If we can use a PA that's maybe a, a easier deployment with a little less complexity to it, that that saves some time. So that maybe biases is makes makes us choose one one direction versus the other, um, depending on the scenario. So that totally makes sense to me. I uh, I completely get that. Um, obviously, I would imagine if I looked at that first example, you you might you might say, oh, it's a little lighter weight music. It's going to be families hanging out enjoying music. It's probably not 100 101 dB rock music, I would imagine this is probably a little different, right? This might be a little more upbeat. We want more contour in the PA. We want more low mid frequency to, to feel like a big PA. Is that right, Dan? Yeah, and what we kind of see, uh, I'm actually jump to our next slide here. Uh, so we kind of see with this situ situation, um, there might be a little more prominence for impact, uh, maybe from front of house forward. Uh, we get a lot of energy there. Uh, people are really enjoying the, the, uh, the event, the artist. Uh, and also, too, this is going to be a standing crowd. This is people up moving around. Um, right. And where the system, too, we might push towards the back of our coverage uh, where we start to tail off a little bit. And that could be uh, a good thing in our design. Because, you know, as Scott, you know, you've been to some festivals like these as well. People are in the back grabbing some drinks, grabbing some food. Um, and all of a sudden, hey, Spike, I really love this song. They're really going to go back to where the meat of the show is. Um, so, again, it's people moving yeah. around. Cool. quite a bit yeah so we're talking about a pretty big area this is 60 meters deep but the reality is we might only need to cover the front of house and high spl and after that we need to make sure everyone can hear but um it's okay if the spl drops off back by the vendor tents so that they can more easily sell their their food and drinks maybe it's also we could i can imagine this situation this looks maybe residential almost we want to make sure it doesn't go 10 blocks down and the sound starts to to fall off pretty quick right yeah, we could be like a warehouse district or something like that, where again, sure. many of the uh, American cities, uh, a lot of these older warehouse districts are becoming condos. So sure. it, it kind of comes that idea of we want to kind of control where we're sending some energy. Uh, again, this is a great example where with the product line of the A series, Kara2, K2, uh, we can go into Panflex. Um, Got it. We can go asymmetrical, which is great. Keep energy off those hard surfaces. Cool. Yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. Um, so where do we go from here, Dan? We've, we've obviously kind of talked about a couple different venues. Um, we keep mentioning Kara 2, A Series, even K2. Um, do we start to start thinking about either what makes the most sense for our particular application? Do we dig into that? What's what's the next step? Um, I think what we kind of look at here, we'll kind of look at, you know, we have this wonderful tool of SoundVision um, where we can kind of look at our products, uh, how they're going to perform and what those needs for that event are. Uh, so I'm going to shift gears on us here. Let's pull up our uh, SoundVision file here. Uh, so I, Scott, you said you did, uh, you put a link in 
up the uh, chat for everybody if they want to yep. download this. Yeah, feel free to download okay, this, cool. guys. Um, this is actually the file that uh, um, uh, Dan has created today, and I think you have in there, so for everyone's enjoyment, um, one of our CAD draftsmen at L Acoustics has put together a really nice model of one of these mobile stages. This so happens to be an SL260. Is that correct, Dan? You, you are and, correct. That is an and, SL260. It's really nice. And it's 32 foot wide stage, eight meters. Let's call it that. Um, and how high is the the fly position? Is it about uh, 20 feet or seven meters or so? Does that sound right? Yeah, because yeah, if I look at even one of the uh, you know systems, I, yeah, we're probably I believe the frame is going to be at about 25 feet. Oh, so it's a pretty tall uh, stage. Okay, so this 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 yeah. is actually so maybe <clears throat> is bigger. Um, yeah, then like some said, might we're be. We're looking at this. Sure. Uh, it's unique, I think, with this approach. Uh, we can get up to this size. Um, if it. it's an SL100, which is a little bit smaller stage, or that maybe hmm. smaller modular or permanent stage uh, in an area. Got it. So this this just, uh, we're using this as an example. You guys, obviously, uh, your particular application may differ. Um, and just for those of you following along at home, whether it's on YouTube or Teams, um, what we can actually do is go into uh, SketchUp and import a lot of these models. So if it's a stage line or it's a different mobile stage, if you're in Europe or in Asia, um, if someone has built a SketchUp model of that, you can import that. And with the L Acoustics SketchUp plugin, you can then spit that into SoundVision. Um, so effectively, that's what our CAD draftsmen have done, which is really nice. Um, so please don't hesitate to try that at home. And if you would like as well, I will put a description in the notes. Um, we have a, a webinar that we did specifically on advanced room modeling that teaches you how to do those techniques. So don't hesitate to miss that. That'll be in the, the notes on YouTube. So if you're watching right now on YouTube, just click below and you'll see that. Uh, Dan, have at it. Let's see what we got. Yeah, so this kind of goes to the idea. Um, kind of, as I said, we'll kind of set the scene, uh, you know, kind of you know, tell the story. Uh, this is what we saw in that quick graphic in our PowerPoint. Uh, so our area is wider than it is deep. Uh, we got those vendor tents around the side, maybe front of house, about 100 feet out. Um, and, and people are going to kind of be spread everywhere. So that's why when we look at our audience area, uh, it's everything. Uh, this is our space to find that we need to work with it. Uh, so what kind of happens, you know, we started talking through some of these different product options of maybe the A-series, uh, Kara 2, K2. Uh, they're all very easy to deploy, and but it comes questions of weight, uh, SPL requirements, contour. Um, so I kind of like to look at, let's turn that guy on for a sec. Um, so we have our B stage. So if we kind of look at our A15s, let's go into mapping. Just out of the gate. Uh, uh, so we can kind of see overall, uh, we're getting good SPL. This is just the main system by itself. There's no fill option employed here yet. Uh, but we'll kind of show that we do have these that would work with this system. Uh, I think one of the main things we kind of see is we got to cover fully to the back. Remember, the conversation or our objective, you could say, is we got to cover all the way to the back of our audience up to the front, and we have the width as well. Um, so if we look at this A series by itself, uh, we're doing you know, roughly about 97, 98 at front of house, um, 97. Uh, so we're doing pretty good. You know, again, this is going to be maybe that regional, maybe it's a blues band, um, you know, kind of the idea that summer sounds yep. uh, kind yeah. of setup. So, so you're at, you're at, you said 98-ish dB ARMS. Yeah. So just remember everyone in sound vision, what we actually show you is, unless you've changed it, you're actually looking at what happens when you send out zero dBU from your console. So you're sending out zero dBU analog from your console um, and then uh, you still have some headroom within the amplifier. So what we're showing right now, Dan, are we at zero dBU or are we at uh, plus a couple at the moment? Do you know? Uh, so what I did to kind of balance all these or anomalize these systems, the A15 is actually plus two dB. Got it. Um, so, so we're using a little bit, and, but we still have resources. There's another additional three dB of headroom still. Uh, with this system. So so yeah, let's, let's just iterate on that so everyone really grabs that well. So um, by default, a preset like A15 in the amplified controller and in sound vision, uh, ships with, let's say, uh, its sensitivity set for uh, zero dBU pink noise, and it has 8 dB headroom. So if you push the fader up 8 dB, you would then hit limit, and Sound Vision actually shows you that same limit. So Dan's saying right now that we're at 97, he's got plus 2 dB on it, so there's actually 6 dB of headroom if there's nothing else going on. Um, and that's also showing you in Sound Vision the RMS level. So this would be pink noise, your meter at RMS slow, you're going to measure 98 dB. That's actually a pretty loud show. Um, and yeah. your transient response, your uh, above that RMS level will be at least 12 dB. So 
that means that we're going to see peaks of 110 dBA out of this system of A15 at the moment. And there might be a little bit more headroom depending on what choices Dan's made in electronics. And we'll see that maybe in a minute here. Yeah, we're going to kind of look at, you know, the first kind of approach. We're just going to kind of show, you know, the SBL, these systems. And we'll kind of go look at some contour uh, difference. And, you know, what I did for, you know, some EQ and resource availability. Yeah. Uh, so if we kind of shift gear so that, again, we'll just kind of fly in for a second. Uh, whoops, sorry, little lag there. Um, you know, a couple of, you know, it's what this is direct design. You can kind of see it in our uh, loudspeaker data. Um, it's three focus and a wide. Um, and as I talked before, because we have pan flex availability, uh, that top zone is at 35 and 35, so 70 degrees. Got it. So, uh, Dan, the A15. And each one of these is circuited individually, too. Yeah, so the A15 is a fixed curvature, a constant curvature line source, right? So you buy the enclosure for the coverage defined. In this case, the focus is 10 degrees of vertical. <coughs> Pardon me, everyone. The focus is 10 degrees of vertical, and you have one, two, three of those. So you have 30 degrees in three boxes, and then the wide at the bottom is 30 degrees of vertical, so you have 30 more degrees in one enclosure. <coughs> and with that, you have the ability to use pan flex, so you can take the horizontal coverage and modify it either 110, 70, 90 left, or 90 right. Is that correct? That is correct. And like I said, that was in my design choices. I, I utilized that right out of the gate. Uh, so I know, again, we have to get some energy towards the back of our coverage, really, you know, use the system as fully as possible and, right. and doing the mechanical shift with that, just cool. popping those fins out. Yep. Uh, so if we kind of shift gears, um, next we'll kind of look at what the Kara 2 system's doing. Let's get that guy in there. Quick mapping. Uh, so we see the very same thing. Um, let's click on a Kara. There we go. Um, what I did in this design too, uh, Kara is in groups of two. Uh, for the design and did the same thing with our pan flux of the Kara 2. I used the top two zones at 70 degrees um, yep. to help get that energy. And we see the same thing again for looking at front of house. We're doing that 97. Oops, not click on front of house. Uh, you know, 98 again. And the resources on the Kara are at zero dB. So we've got a little uh, more headroom so in. Points. Yeah, got it. So, so you had the A15 to get it to show the same in mapping, you turned it up 2 dB. So if we were to fly A15 on one side and Kara 2 on the other, you'd turn the A15 up 2 dB. In other words, you'd use up 2 dB of the headroom. So Kara gets a bit louder. Is that what we can say? Yeah. Got it. Yeah, I think one of the things, and really in this design, you know, my uh, criteria, I was really wanting to make sure we got as much SPL out of the system as possible. Got it. Um, so coverage was a little bit of a sacrifice. Okay. Uh, we even kind of see this in the mapping compared to the A15, and that's where we can support with a, a fill system for those first few rows. Got it. Uh, so which Kara, is great. But Kara looks like a really viable option for this scenario, and it's obviously quite lightweight and uh, and fairly small. Oh, and you've added, looks like, is that uh, SB18 there? That's a couple SB18s, because remember Kara, you know, is, you, we tell everybody, Scott, it, it's a modular system. Uh, right. So if we need to get that full bandwidth, we do need to deploy uh, the SB18s with it. Got it. And, um, and, and the, some unique flexibility too. Um, yeah. You can fly on the side, on top, behind. And, and the ideal around. scenario is to have the Kara and SB18 in proximity, and then we get the the nice big low contour like you would out of a full range source like a K2 or an A15. Um, but if there's a weight restriction, if this is a small stage and they can only hang a, a limited amount of weight, 200 kilo, we might be better off flying just the Kara, not the sub. That's kind of the logic. Yeah, and, yeah, and what you kind of see too, um, I can show it here in a minute with the mechanical side. Uh, A15 is about 350 pounds uh, for the array, and the Kara 2 plus the SB18s is roughly about 700 pounds. Um, so, so it becomes, you know, be mindful, because sometimes we have other departments out there. Um, Got it. You know, our video friends like to hang stuff. Um, so it's always something we have to keep in mind with our objectives as well. Cool. What else you got there, uh, and then, uh, We got K2, because like they said, oops, it's going to ding at me for a second. There we go. Uh, we'll go to our K2 system. Um, so this is 5K2 uh, flown aside, okay. um, and what we kind of see here, um, there we go, uh, to actually kind of get this in the same wheelhouse, uh, I turned the K2 down 2 dB. Got it. Um, so we have more power available, but again, it's that conversation, what are the design requirements? Got it. Um, maybe you're going to be doing more of those B-level acts on these stages, but maybe K2 being that full bandwidth, uh, a little Lots bit more power. power. Sure. Yeah. Um, so so, if, so once again, you've turned it down 2 dB. So what's neat in sound vision, if you guys aren't familiar with this, and Dan's got it on screen right now, just perfect. We actually show a headroom resource calculator that's assuming you're sending like a pink noise signal, right? 
um, and that's taking into account all the gain settings, electronic settings, and your console gain within SoundVision, and we can probably show you that in a second. And what it says is, hey, in the low end, you've got, it looks like about, uh, what does that say there? Almost 11 dB of headroom in Almost the low 11. end. 10.97. Yeah, so it's called 11 dB. So you've got 11 dB of low end headroom. So you are at 98 dB, which means the low end can go up 11 dB before it hits limit. And the high end can only go up in this case, uh, just over nine. Is that what it is? 9.3 or something? 9.4? 9.4. 9. 9. Yeah, so we've got, if we're at 98, that means we can actually go almost 10 dB. So 108 RMS. Right, and then the peak transient response would be at least 12 dB above that. So we're talking about a peak A weight transient response of something like 120, which might be overkill for your given application. However, if this happens to be the exact same layout at a metal festival or an EDM festival, you might want to go more towards K2. If this is that local um, uh, sell, uh, sell sausages and drink beer and have a good time with your family in your community, a series might be the, the best fit in that scenario. So we kind of just showing that all of these do something very similar in terms of coverage. Um, they all actually do something very similar in terms of contour. It's just really a trade off for SPL, right? Yeah, and that's what we kind of, and so you see the same thing here at the K2, um, not covering quite as much in front compared to the constant curvature. Sure. Uh, it's just kind of that nature of the beast. Uh, uniqueness yeah and if we think um, of the a series we've got what three tens and a 30 which makes 60 degrees and with Kara, mm -hmm. we have uh six boxes that can do 10 degrees max but we want to tighten them up to throw in the back so right off the bat we're less than 60 and with k2 we have five boxes that can do 10 degrees each and we want to throw to the back so we're doing much less than 60 and and you can see that impact in the front uh, a, a great sound engineer um world renowned guy once told me years ago that it's far easier to put up front fills than it is to hang delays um, so uh, putting a couple of front fills out is probably an easy thing to do at 11 a.m. versus a, a delay tower behind front of house in this particular case. So I would definitely vote for yeah. that in most cases. And, and what you see here too is, you know, again, we have, you know, subs with the system, we have front fills and easily deploying four A10s. Um, sure. Anybody that sees the mechanical warning there uh, in our loudspeaker, um, that's because the A10s are ground supported. Uh, it's a stability warning. Just, hey, let's make sure they're secure, um, yeah, which is key there. Uh, and one thing that's kind of unique in this uh, application too is because uh, it is a wider area, uh, maybe we have to deploy some outfill support. Uh, so it could be a couple A10 focus or A10 wides, um, again, going over to that side. And what I do like in my design with this, because um, we do have that pan flexibility uh, in the A10 series as well, uh, we can narrow that HF coverage in front. So we're trying to reduce some energy through those first yeah. couple of rows. Yeah. Uh, but as we all know, you know, ground uh, supported fills, um, it's kind of a little bit of a downside because it, it sound is like fire. Um, the closer <laughs> to it we are, the hotter it is. Uh, so maybe it comes another question of do it become a flown out fill? Sure. Um, so this you could can fly be a couple speakers. A10. And again, this is where weight, you know, maybe it becomes part of that conversation of what the main system weighs. Uh, what kind of weight do I have still available cool. uh, with the system? And that's where maybe you can do something like that. So. Cool. This is cool. Uh, this so is really kind of a look at the system. Yeah, that's really neat. Um, and and can you zoom in on that? I just love to see what the the little is that like three or four A10 there um, versus uh, it's four A10. It's two focus A10s and two wides. It's focus oh, cool. focus wide wide. And so you put you that. Yeah, I was assuming that probably is what you would use with either the the K2 or the uh, the A15 system, kind of a scenario potential. Yeah, exactly. We because again we can they don't weigh very much at all, uh, which is sure. great. Um, they're a fast easy deployment. And again, it helps get that energy out to the side. Because remember, this is a everybody's everywhere kind of audience area. Uh, yeah. area. So we got to really support to those outside. So it's another option we can look at. Um, and like I said, we kind of looked at the SPL of the system. Um, so one thing we'll take a quick look at, uh, let's go to our 2D source view. And we kind of talk about that contour. Uh, we can kind of see what these systems are doing uh, on their own. Uh, sure. We kind of see that overall. Uh, design aspect uh, where the A15, uh, we're doing maybe that eight, uh, eight dB contour at 100 hertz. Cool. Um, or if we kind of compare that to Kara, um, we're not extending as low because remember that's what we discussed. Uh, it's a modular system. This is where the SB18 would then be supporting with the system. Got it. Um, so we'd have to add that element to get that contour. Um, then, of course, we look at that contour of the K2. Now we're going like plus 10 at 100 hertz, uh, really extending down to like 40 hertz uh, with the system. So again, like you said, Scott, you know, it, this is a metal festival or it's a 
a hard rock festival or something like that, maybe we do have to have that support uh, with the main so we get that power, that contour. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, and the final thing we'll kind of talk, and two things I want to touch on real quick here. Um, one thing that's very unique um, with this setup, I'm going to pop into mechanics here for a split sec. Uh, there we go. Um, this is reality uh, of maybe hanging on a stage line. Uh, we're a single point hang. Um, so A15 is going to be single point, so on and so forth. Uh, but it's really cool with sound vision uh, and these auto splay tools we have. We can define our max coverage area or minimum and use auto splay uh, with two points. Uh, we'll set our side angle where we need to hit, use auto display, use auto filter, use all our tools. Uh, and what ends up happening then, say I want to be minus, you know, we can see in the background on the, uh, I think I'm on Kara, sorry, double check my, uh, yep, uh, sorry on K2. Um, say I have to hit minus six degrees uh -huh. uh, is my target. Well, now I shift the single point, and now I look at my options to get as close as possible back to my original side angle. Got it. So, um, so that's a great way we can use those auto display tools with two points and then shift to a single point. Yeah, and, and this is a common issue. So I think it's a really great thing to point out, Dan. A lot of users out there have this this challenge is um, auto display won't operate in a single point because as it changes the inter element angles to find the best solution, the center gravity of the array is going to shift, which then changes where the array is pointing, which then means you need to change the angles uh, in order to get the best solution, which then means and uh, I believe that's known as an infinite loop, right? So what we actually do here is say, okay, if you're gonna use auto display, you do two points and you say, I want, as you were saying, minus four, minus six, and then you choose the best fly option that will get you as close as possible. I personally tend to, tend to, tend to bias a little overshoot, right? So in other words, if, mm -hmm. if one of the solutions, if I'm going for negative six and one of the solutions is negative five, what I know is I'm about to hang 20 kilos of cable on the back, which is gonna affect that, or, or I'm gonna pull the cable up, which is not gonna affect that. So I, I generally tend to bias a little bit overshoot. Um, I'd rather over aim than under aim, that's me. Um, but if you have a long bit of cable hanging down and that cable's in the back, it's gonna tilt the PA up a lot. So maybe you don't wanna do that in that case, right? Um, but this is all things that, that SoundVision has a hard time calculating. How much cable are you gonna hang? Um, so just keep that in mind, but that's exactly how you deal with that. Um, I don't think we've had any questions coming yet from the live audience. If you guys have any questions about what we're doing, maybe about this comparison of A-Series or Kara or K2, please don't hesitate to uh, send them in the Q&A. Dan and I will do our best to answer those live on air right now. And if you're on YouTube, uh, sorry, we're not live right now. Um, and uh, if you think I'm Canadian just because I said sorry, I apologize about that too. Uh, move on, Dan. Uh, and, and yeah, and I'm just going to add while we're in here, too, uh, we'll, we'll hit our northern friends again. Um, so when you look at our total weight here, um, everybody always keep in mind, that's just the boxes and the bumper. That, that's not any of the other bits and bobs um, that go with this. Oh, system. good point. Yeah, that's uh, not the that's yeah, not the so motor that you're going to fly with, right? So if this stage line point is acceptable for 500 kilogram or 1,000 pounds, you need to make sure that your motor plus cable plus everything else is under in this case, you know, about uh, 180 pounds or, you know, what is that, about uh, 85 kilogram. So as long as you're under that limit, then you'll be fine, um, which if it's a small motor, that'll be okay. If it's a big one, because it's all you have, you might be in trouble. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. That might be a reason I would choose one system over another is the weight allocation ability. Um, for sure, in a lot of these, Dan, I'm going to choose something that's easier to deploy. Um, you know, K2 is great, but um, it takes a lot of a uh, lot more pins and parts to deploy it versus say A15, which which I think in this case with uh, four A15 would require flipping two pins, and that's about it. Um, if you uh, yeah. yeah exactly and well, you kind of see that different. We kind of you know look at the contour we kind of talked about um, you know with the A15s um, more extension, a little more contour compared to maybe Carrot Two uh, with the SB18. But like you said. You, you know, ease of the mechanics, the deployment, a um, sure. couple of latches per box, click, click, click. And also if we look at that total weight of the A15s, we're just under 360 pounds, yeah. uh, which is really good. Where the K2 was 750. And like I said, the Kara 2 plus uh, the SB18s comes out to about 750. Yeah, so those two are uh, similar so in weight. Yeah, more powerful, yep. but similar in weight. So this one's actually gonna be one of our best bets for weight versus SPL. So if we have a limited weight scenario, then A15 is really going to be one of the best choices. And really, too, like we kind of touched on that outfill flown idea. Maybe, like you said, maybe a thousand pounds is our max. Well, if we're at 750 plus another few hundred pounds plus motor plus plus plus, uh, we're maybe getting close to that working load. Sure. Uh, we're now maybe the A15 with an A10. We're well within limits, and we got a really good deployment. 
uh, nice coverage. So again, it's flexibility of what you're trying to achieve. Right. Uh, I think with that, you know, we kind of touched on these bases. So I think what's kind of interesting now, uh, we'll go back into our system plus venue mu. We're going to mute and hide all these guys. And we're going to kind of maybe take a look at what maybe a city festival looks like. Um, so now that stage line is rolled into a street. Um, this is as Scott mentioned before. Uh, it's going to maybe maybe a couple crew personnel are involved. This is where that stage is going to roll in at 6 a.m. Sure. Uh, Set up fast. PA is rigging at 8. Um, we're calibrated, tuned at 10. We're doing a show by noon. Sure. Uh, yeah. So really within four to six hours, we're completely show ready. Cool. And what kind of what kind of solutions? Obviously, I would imagine in this scenario, Panflex is a big win with the ability to take the same set of enclosures, narrow them down. Um, it's a pretty long throw, though. Is this a bit of a stretch for something like A15, or is it actually doing reasonably well? They're doing well, and I said that's that design objective idea. Remember, we kind of talked about maybe the front of house forward. That's where everybody really wants to come hear the show. Sure. Because many times with these kind of style festivals, it's not necessarily about the music as the primary. Um, it's about people coming in, checking out the local merchants, uh, arts and crafts. Uh, maybe in this situation, the street, maybe these are uh, restaurants or maybe uh, sure. you know, clothing sure. or other yep. merchants. And they've now set up on the street. Um, right. And so what's unique in this, we're trying to throw far and narrow. Right. Um, what's kind of fun about this, when we look at our audience area. Um, it's really generally all of it, but we're only covering this one block. Um, and like I said, this is going to be that standing audience. Um, and this is kind of fun too. So anybody that wants to play with this design for uh, at least the North America side, uh, this is actually true street width. Uh, so the main part of the street is actually four lanes. So two lanes of traffic plus two lanes of parking plus okay. curb plus frontage. Uh, found a wonderful right. website that gave me all that information. Cool. So this is this uh, is a this is this is a realistic concept. It makes perfect sense. It looks like uh, where I grew up. So I, I totally am with you on that. Um, and and now can we look at like maybe what is the A15 doing in this this scenario? I'm just curious to know how how much SPL and how the throw is to the back. Yeah, so we, same idea. Now what we've done, uh, let's click on my A15. Uh, now we've gone 90 degrees asymmetric. Okay. Uh, so we've popped the fin out. We're trying to keep as much HF energy off this maybe hard reflective brick surface as much as we can. Uh, sure. Yeah, as much as we can. Um, so that's what we kind of see. And one thing I think that's kind of unique um, that we see in this design right away, uh, we see a good SPL coverage in the front, uh, and we're starting to trail off in the back. And one thing that does happen, um, there's a shadow. Um, sure. We have a tent right in the middle. Um, so what I'm going to actually deploy with this uh, for all these systems, uh, a couple A10s on a stick. Uh, this becomes our fill delay. Uh, just behind front of house, help give a little bit of energy just beyond where the mix position is. Sure, and this uh, this is probably something that's dependent. I've seen a lot of times where they actually put vendors right behind front of house. Um, so if it's if it's vendors, it's probably not a big deal. If mm -hmm. um, if it's going to be a, a audience area, and then it's probably an important thing to have a delay there. If the tent is going to come down during the day, if the weather's okay, it's probably not a big deal. Um, if the tent structure has got a spotlight tower on it because the they want to do that, then it's probably a, a bigger deal, right? Yeah, and that's where it kind of varies what the event is. Uh, and that's what's kind of unique uh, from that scalability conversation. Maybe that first year, the first year of the festival, maybe it's a ground supported system. Sure. Uh, it's maybe a couple of KS21s and a couple of A15s. Maybe it's ground stack K2, um, if that's what your business model does more of. Um, yeah. And let's say they do the first year of this and it's the first year event, it does really well. Um, people loved it. They loved the atmosphere. Yeah. It was a beautiful weekend for it. But now we have to scale it up. Yeah, um, now maybe we have to deploy a flown system. Um, so it gives that you know, versatility to what, I mean, these things range from everything. Um, yeah. But it shows that versatility of the systems. Got it. So now um, I see, I see is it same 98 or so dB in the mix position? Yep. Is it is it a similar distance to that other festival or is it a yep. bit closer? About 100 foot back. Um, so 30 meters back, position. yeah, 30 meters yep. back is mix, and headroom is about the same as well, looks like. Um, now I see, Dan, you've got a different amount of headroom in the low frequency and the high frequency. Um, is that is that due to something? Um, kind of matching that contour a little bit. Um, I was able to kind of actually use our ray morphing tool and just kind of shape that low, low mids a little bit. 
um, to kind of fall within that maybe 8 dB contour of the system. Uh, and by doing that, it buys us some resources. And then uh, also, so all these systems, uh, auto filters been deployed. Um, so each one of those has the uh, uh, FF, uh, FIR, sorry, coffee wore off for a second. Uh, FIR filters deployed and air comps for each zone of the system, depending how the system is zoned, is being deployed got, here got as it. well. Got it. So right now what you've got is um, in the low end, you took a little bit of energy out of the PA to get it to match your target. And so that means you gain a little headroom. So if we turn down the low end in an EQ, we gain headroom. Makes sense. And at the opposite yeah. end of that, we're using auto filter to uh, normalize the HF response in terms of its transfer function as best as possible, which uses some resources. And today you're allowing it to use up to 2 dB of, of FIR filter. Is that correct? Is that what I see there? That is correct. So yeah. you can set within sound vision, you can give it a target and 2 dB seems very reasonable. Um, uh, in a lot of cases, you can actually check to see if I if I restrict it and only allow it to use one dB of available headroom, does it change much the results? And if it doesn't, you might as well do that. Um, that just means that the top box or the, the second box, for instance, is only allowed to use one or two dB of its headroom to get to its target. And you can maybe change it to three dB in the case of this show, instead of it being in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where it's humid and comfortable, it's in Tempe, Arizona, where it's, uh, uh, I believe it's, um, sun adjacent right so it's it's very hot and dry um, we could say the same thing if we were doing a show in uh, certain parts of of the world where it's really hot and dry you might want to let it use a little more resources to try to, to compensate um yeah i think that and that's a great thing too you mentioned there scott of knowing your area your region and utilizing these atmospheric conditions that's sure. why you saw at the top of the presentation we talked what what the event's going to be like uh, uh, Scott, maybe you can give a quick example. Uh, you've been at Coachella a few times. Um, sure. You talk about widely spread atmospheric conditions. Yeah, and, and that, that happens. That happens everywhere from from places like major festivals like Coachella, but it happens in a lot of environments, especially um, certain coastal environments where during the day it can be hot and dry, and at night it can be cool and wet. And, and that's a pretty big atmospheric change. And if you have a tool built in that helps you compensate for that, it's a lot easier as an engineer. Um, so just remember, like at, uh, say, for instance, uh, this this is about a 50 meter throw, I think it is, or 60 meter throw. We could realistically see in these these coastal regions that are hot and dry during the day and cool and wet at night, um, we could see something on the order of a 10 dB variance at 10 kilohertz, right? So that's just the atmosphere causing that change. Um, so within Sound Vision, you can model for a specific environmental set. And within Network Manager, you can modify your current tuning based on the environmental set. And if you happen to have a P1 front house processor, that processor comes with a thermal probe uh, that measures the temperature and humidity. So it'll actually tell you what the settings are that you need to apply. Um, if you haven't seen that, I'll put that in the notes on YouTube. If you're watching, we've got a couple of webinars that we talk specifically about these kind of topics. So don't hesitate to check that out after this. Um, Dan, I see you've done the same concept. You've worked through all the different variants. I'm assuming we see the same delta here in terms of SPL between the different systems. Yeah, we did the same thing where if we look at our Kara 2 system, uh, we did the same thing where we are utilizing, uh, let's get those guys up real quick, sorry. Um, I'm just leaving the front of house delays on for now. Um, but same idea where we've gone now, uh, it's a little bit of a push on this one for the Kara. Uh, we did about a dB and a half um, to help throw a little bit more and we still utilize that Panflex uh, heavily sure. here in these systems. Uh, where we've gone, let's get my little screen to roll over. Oh, just lost my mouth. There we go. Uh, we can see that we've gone asymmetric again uh, with 90 degrees with the Kara 2 system. That's really uh, cool. Reducing those reflections as best as possible. Uh, and we see a front of house again. Uh, we're doing that 98 dB uh, in front of house. Uh, we're getting support. Uh, if we kind of turn our front fills off for a sec. Try not front fills, front of house delays, use the correct term. Uh, we kind of see at the back, we're still doing 94. Um, oh, that's, yeah, that's I mean, beer tents. Yeah, so I mean, 92. Yeah, and, and I'm kind of a big fan of that in a lot of festival environments to try to get the SPL to politely drop off at the back, um, especially at these environments where you have vendors, because honestly, if you can, if you can make every single sale be 5% easier because it's not as loud back there, they're going to do more business, which ultimately I'd imagine this is the revenue stream for this environment is mm -hmm. the vendor sales, right? Like a lot of these festivals are are just open to the public um, or pardon me, a lot of these festivals are open to the public. So they're, the revenue stream is coming from the vendor sales. Um, and so that's really important to remember is that the more people, 
the easier it is for everyone to order their beer, their sausage, their ice cream cone, or their pizza slice. Um, the producer of that show gets 10 or 20% of that. That helps the whole revenue stream. Everyone's happier. If everyone, every time you say, hey, I want a, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, you're from Milwaukee, Dan. If I want a Pabst Blue Ribbon, a PBR, and you have to scream it twice before they understand that you said a uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon, uh, it's going to be a little harder, uh, you know, to 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 get that sale. So PBR me ASAP. Is that what we say? Yeah, and the idea too, uh, the fact, like you said, you could be back there, and we still want to be involved in the show, but we're yep. not full yep. horsepower. But that's what I said. You grab that ice cold PBR can, tall boy. Be there tall you go. Boy. Uh, then you go, man, I really love this song. This is a great song. I want to go check out this band. Now you're going to push up to where now you're in in the main part of the performance, yeah. uh, which is key. Uh, you know, so you know, that, that uniqueness. Yeah, you know what's really neat about this, what you've shown off, and I, I just want people to really remember this, is that if I'm doing this with A15 or Kara 2 or K2, um, I've now actually deployed three, actually, pardon me, four different horizontally deployments. So I've got a box that I had at 110 outside at your festival for the bottom of the array. I had a box at 70 at your uh, community festival for the top of the array. At the street festival, I have a box that's 90 left and I have a box that's 90 right. So I actually need to have four different SKUs in my inventory with any other product line except stuff with Panflex where I can actually take the same enclosure and do four different things. That's a really neat thing for our scalability and most importantly in rental case, it's about how often it's going out the door. So um, that's really cool to see. now. My question to you, Dan, I want to pivot this out. I think I think we've covered all these topics really well, and, and, and unless you've got a few other things to show off in here, but I, I have some questions. How do I decide I'm, I'm my name is Scott, I, I'm, I've got a rental company, should I, should I go and get some A15, some Kara 2 or some K2? What's the logic maybe to, to make this choice? What, what makes sense to you? Uh, I think one of the key things that you kind of look at is, you know, what is the kind of, you know, show support, shows you've been doing? Um, are you doing some of these community park festivals where it is more local uh, or regional bass bands uh, where, again, it could be a blues band, a DJ, uh, so, some other kind of, you know, just not heavy SBL, heavy contour. Um, but at the same time, it gives you that flexibility. You can now roll in and do the same festival in a street festival. So I think having an easily deployable system like the A15 series uh, with PanFlex, PanFlex across the board. And when I was going through this design aspect, that ability to go from outdoor wide to a narrow street. Because uh, we think about it, this is an SL260 parked in the middle of a cross section. This is not a very wide performance area. Um, that's why we don't see, I uh, didn't talk on any flown outfills. We might have a little ground support for a little something. Sure. Uh, but I think the ease of like we talked to of, you know, if you're a company, if maybe you're the mix engineer as well, you're the owner, you're mixing the shows, you have to deploy the system and maybe support of one or two other people um, that ease of deployment is crucial. Um, sure. And like so, we said, that scalability, it could start, you could start off ground stack, show's doing really well, we can now grow that system to be a flown system. And so what, yeah, what you're saying is, easy. is obviously if if what you're doing is maybe more, uh, if, if, if that street festival is the biggest show you're gonna do, something like A15 makes a lot of sense, right? Um, yeah. Because you can take four A15 and do four really small PAs, right? Speaker on a stick, you could do, two medium-sized PAs with a ground stack left, right, two A15, two KS21, and you could scale up and put all four together and do a large PA like like this mobile stage in in your community. Um, so that makes sense. So if you're saying if, if the biggest things you're doing are these two to 3,000 person shows in city centers and community centers, and they're not EDM concerts, it, it makes perfect sense to go with A15. Now, what's the reason I might go with Kara or K2, that variable curvature line source, is, is there a different justification for that, why that might make most sense? Um, so one of the things you look at with maybe getting into those product lines, um, maybe we're also, this is some kind of the shows we do, but maybe we're also going to the, we're doing some of the sheds in town. Sure. Uh, maybe we're doing an arena. So where we do have a larger deployed system uh, and that's more, you know, the workload uh, per se, but you still can do these. That's what's great about that flexibility. We can drop a keratosis with SB18s uh, and also maybe the uh, requirements, the SBL requirements, the contour, maybe this is, you know, instead of a day festival, maybe there's day bands and then there's a headlining act tonight, uh, but maybe not necessarily A list, but, you know, maybe we're a C or B list act, uh, a couple hits, you know, kind of idea. Uh, sure. And now we have a system that's robust for what that need is. Uh, what's great too, uh, if we kind of look at that idea of growth, um, 
maybe uh, you get into a K2 system. What's so great is this A-series system is still a supplemental uh, flown outfill system. It, it could be a front fill system. Uh, it, it's still utilized on these larger format shows. We're getting up to a few thousand people now uh, for an event. So we can still utilize that uh, in our inventory, which I think is great. Cool. So so if the if this maybe represents the smaller shows we're doing, that's where Kara K2 comes into play. If if more often we're doing big shows, we can we can cut it in half our 24 K2 system and cut it into two systems of six or three systems of four for these small stages with K2, and it'll be fine. It's not the most, uh, uh, it might be a little easier to fly 15, but at the end of the day, the best system is the one you own. Um, so that makes perfect sense to me. If I'm more often doing big shows, I can use uh, uh, K2 and maybe Kara if I'm doing long throw, you know, theater, performing arts centers, that kind of a project more often. Um, so that makes a lot of sense to me. And then what you said at the end there, I really want to highlight is uh, we could use A15 to supplement our K2 at a festival. We might use it as a belay tower or an outfill, uh, just as we might use A10, which is the small constant curvature uh, line source array uh, to do supplement for A15, right? So that's a, a really good use uh, transversely across the products. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, Dan, this is really cool. So everyone, once again, um, I'm going to post that link one more time. If you're watching us live, if you somehow missed it, um, it's in the YouTube uh, notes as well. This is a download of the file that Dan was using today that has that stage line SL260. It has all those different designs of A-Series, Kara 2, and K2. Um, it's got both of your venues in it, so it's a really cool file for everyone to uh, use at home and take a look at. Um, a uh, couple of good questions came in. Thank you guys very much for that. I think we were able to cover those topics, so I'm not going to rehash that. Dan, is there anything else that we need to hit, or is uh, is this the things to think about when you're dealing with small to medium festival designs? Um, I think these are the big criteria. So, you know, always what those design objectives are. Um, are we an SBL show? Are we a coverage show? What's our contour? Uh, it's just all those things, you know, we look when we go to design, what do we need to do? And Sound Vision is just an amazing tool to be able to see all this in a virtual environment and make those decisions uh, for what we need to achieve. Cool. Um, I think it's key. Yeah, and everyone, uh, once again, if you have any questions about uh, Sound Vision design, if you have any questions about uh, the A-Series, Kara 2, K2, if you have any designs about your small to medium festival, um, don't hesitate to reach out to your local L Acoustics application engineer. They would love to help and answer some of these questions if you have more specific ones. Um, I hope everyone out there is safe and healthy. Please take this time to grow your skills and improve uh, your sound vision design abilities. We are all really looking forward to getting back to doing shows. And I'd imagine that these are gonna be the first things that come back, wouldn't you, Dan? I would, I think especially these community festivals like that where we can be in a larger, wider area, spread out a little bit. I think that's gonna be some of the first, and it's just gonna be a great feeling to be outdoors at an event again. I think that's what we're really gonna see first. Cool. Well, thank you guys very much. Um, I really appreciate everyone's uh, time and attention. Um, please have a great rest of your day. Uh, we will be back on air next week, so don't hesitate to uh, check us out. Uh, we'll be posting that on social media shortly uh, so you guys can join in. Dan, thanks for having you. Great to see you. Can't wait to have a beer in person. So PBR me ASAP. Yeah, it'd be a tall boy too. So thank you, Scott, and thank everyone for joining us. All right. Thank you guys. Have a great